know these things in principle, but I think my next obsession is gonna be how do we get everything that's already been being generated by the actual um, the field for so long into a very practical place? Because I think we have obsessed over what's the research, what's the new study, what's this, what's that? Dude, and ladies, we know that there is the adolescent brain, this is how people develop, we know these are the things that um, tend to work um, in these situations, but the question magically becomes, how do we start to actually make these practical things in a way that disrupts the system so much that it replaces what's there? When we decided to go um, down this route, we said to ourselves, we're not gonna look at improving the case management system, because improving the case management system would be the same journey as improving the flip phone. You would get a flip phone, right? And so we w did a lot of work and experiments, and what we came out with is that, you know what, we want to build software that enables humans, right, both paid and unpaid, to do three things heal, develop, and then positions them to thrive. For us, it's like, how do we make sure we're creating those moments of authentic human interaction that's informed, and that then, that's that healing moment, a new experience that rewires the negative experience that you have had. Developing abilities, we're clear what adolescents are supposed to be learning. They're supposed to be figuring out, do I speak up, do I not, you know, figuring out that expression. So how do we use the actual system to become coaching moments. You're, you know, for us, it's you're about to have a meeting with your social worker. Have you thought of these things? You know, you get the text message. Oh, I might tell my social worker this. So then that way, you're starting to think and prepare and build that skill. And then the last one where I am really excited about is artificial intelligence to position people to thrive. And just hear me out because I know this is a lot of people think differently, feel a lot of different ways about artificial intelligence. For us, using machine learning and AI to figure out where a young person has the highest probability to work, I think we can find more examples like that. So we, we were doing a partnership with Snag a Job and we went with Microsoft and built a little tiny brain where it's pulling the data in from Snag a Job and it's saying, hey, where are the jobs that fluctuate too much in hours distribution? We know our young people can't work there because for our young people who don't have a safety net and aged out, 100 bucks short means homeless sometimes, you know? And so making sure those are rolled out. What's the bus line that gets to these jobs, right? Being able to compute that and then say, oh, if the, this, the, if the jobs are in this area, the frequency of the bus is that you can probably wake up late and still make it work on time. Because guess what adolescents do? They wake up late. We're, we're trying to change that behavior, but you know sometimes it's going to happen. So I think that there's a huge opportunity for us to figure out how to use these advanced technologies to apply it to what we know to be true already, and and, and try to shift those indicators in the field. And I think we're not doing, we're not having enough of that conversation yet. And I look to see that also in the work of the paid professional side, because how do you get enabled to do your work? very much in, in very much in a different way that's not just an improvement of the tool that you're using not just let me get an online directory that can get me to the place faster but what if that online directory was so smart i'm only recommending to you the three or five the three to five places that is smart enough to match up with this profile, right? So I think we have a lot that we can do with technology if we start to have people risky enough to raise their hand and say, we're willing to go down that route. 